represent over one million Floridians who are bad for life, from living in certain areas, from getting jobs, from, from being able to point their concerns. These individuals are tax paying citizens, but yet they don't have any say so in what goes on in their community. That is not right. And as we represented them, and the people up in Tallahassee kept telling us that it was a public safety issue, they said that this is what they say if they allow me to vote, that you guys are going to be in danger. I can agree. So now, what, and, and I'm, I'm glad that they did say that. I'm glad that they purchased it. And then there's all the one million for really, for one million reason. Not gonna make it because they really uh, uh, showed their true colors. They really showed the reason why we are here today. The reason why we're protesting. Because they displayed that they are only concerned about their corporate sponsors. They're only concerned about these corporations that yeah. contribute to their campaign, and they don't give a damn about what's happening to any one of us out here today. How do I know that? Well, I'll tell you how. I made the argument to the, uh, to the governor and to the attorney general, and I said, listen, if you would allow individuals after they have paid their debt to society to uh, get their civil rights back, to help them reintegrate back into the community, here's what's going to happen. Florida's going to be able to reallocate $3 billion each year into programs that need it. Florida will also be able to increase contributions to the tax base so they don't have to keep raising everybody else's tax. Florida will also experience a dramatic reduction in crime. And it does not cost the state one city to implement this policy. You know what they told me? Hell no. We're not doing it. So they would rather spend eighteen to twenty thousand dollars to incarcerate one person each year, while they only spend three thousand five hundred for your students. School. We now know where their priorities lie. It's in imprisoning people instead of educating people. What they've done is that through the guise of, of get up on, on, on crime law, they have created an environment that it has made the uh, law enforcement interact with our kids as young as eight years old. And when these kids interact with the, uh, and they get arrested and, and, and they go to these adult jails, they end up becoming stigmatized and that increases the probability of these kids dropping out of high school. And when they drop out of high school, it increases the probability of them committing what? A crime. And when they commit these crimes, the state has passed a law this year that allows for juveniles to be housed with adult offenders. So now you have these juveniles in, the, in, in these jails, in these prisons that's ran by the prison industrial complexes, and they're, they're getting eighteen to twenty thousand dollars per per head when they come in. Then they turn around and outsource these inmates. For prison labor, slave prison labor. So now if a person owns a company that has to have 20 employees and they're paying those employees $20 an hour, I can go to them and say, lay off 18 of them, I'm going to give you 18 prisoners, and you only pay them $2 a day. So now these prisons, the private, uh, uh, prison, private, and central conflict system are attacking even union workers. Yep. Yep. They're trying to destroy unions. They're trying to destroy, they're trying to take jobs away from hard working Americans who pay their taxes. Just so they didn't make extra profit. Because they're not satisfied with 18 to 20,000 they're getting lower. Tell them to show up in the meeting and help them. They want to go ahead and take the jobs away and use prisoners as slave labor. And then when these prisoners complete their sentence, just for what? They have to create an environment to where that inmate would come out of the society and he can't find a job. He can't buy houses. He don't have an education. What do you think they're going to do next? Commit another crime. So they create this environment in order to increase the probability of recidivism. 
So these people can have a continuous fight into the prison, industrial complex, into the prison. The whole time they're doing that, as, as I'm traveling around Florida, I'm seeing police force being reduced. Firefighters being reduced because the things are saying they don't have enough money. And here we are screaming at the top of our lungs, we've got the money. You don't have to lay off our police officers. But now if my house gets on fire, I'm not even sure if the firefighters will be able to come from the house. These people are actually endangering our safety. All for just making sure that their campaign, their top campaign contributors, may all profit. Now think about this for a second. A private prison company is in the business to make money, as yeah. any business is. Yeah. Yeah. Now what prison company would, would support policy that will reduce crime? That will reduce the inflow of prisoners in their system. Yeah. That's like a, a, a funeral director selling medicine to make you live forever. Yeah. That's not going to happen. Yeah. What happens when you let private corporations take over, oh, take over services that we need? Yeah. Because when these corporations take over, they don't give a damn about you. The only thing they care about is that bottom line. Yeah. yeah. I kind of like the things that they're doing. You know, everybody is, is boring Rick Scott, but I'm thanking God for Rick Scott. Because to people like Rick Scott, it took people like Rick Scott to shake us away. Yeah. We have to admit, we weren't sleeping. We weren't And now it's very yeah, clear. We'll just get up to that the more beautiful part about our now. movement is that not all when we look at these corporations that are causing our kids, as a matter of fact, these same corporations, when they go to build prisons, do you know what they look at? They don't look at the current crime rate. They don't look at the protected crime rate. What they do is that they look at the third graders and, and they analyze the test scores. And they look at the demographics. And based on those figures, they build prisons. But they're not building prisons for you and me. They're building prisons for your kids, your grandkids, your little brothers and sisters. Do you think they really care about you? Do you think they want to improve our, our communities so at least our kids don't have to be killed on the street? So our kids don't have to end up in the prison system? Hell no! Because it's about that dollar. And these same corporations that are doing this to our communities are also the same corporations that are behind the drafting of the anti-immigration policy that you are seeing being implemented throughout this country. Because they're not satisfied with, 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 with raping and robbing us. So now they want to go after immigrants as well. And it's more possible. Because each immigrant that they retain, they make $48,000 a year. $48,000. So these private prison industries are making billions upon billions of dollars that should be going to our public services, that should be going to help our fund education, but instead it's going into these people's pockets. And our politicians are making sure that it happens. Well, we need to send a loud and resounding message to Tallahassee. And that message is, when this country was formed, it was always formed by the people and for the people. Yeah. And we must take all the facts. All the nation has occupied movement. All across the nation there's drugs. But I'm telling you right now, yeah, a lot of people are born bomb and all that. But I'm going to tell you without birth, it seems to me that it don't matter who's in Washington, as long as we got an asshole up in the governor's mansion in Florida. Yeah! Of course! And if, as we take care of Florida, we can set the standards for the rest of the country. It's more White, Asian, Latino, it doesn't matter. We're going to stand together. As I look out here and I see this, we're going to come together as, a, 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 as Americans. We're going to come together as human beings, and we're going to bring this country back to where it's supposed to be.
Can you and me and anyone else that you know, we can overcome any of them. I can tell you now, if I can go from being a homeless, unemployed, suicidal, crack addict, to a law school, a, 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 a CME, and, and the president of, of a major uh, uh, advocacy, advocacy organization, then what can you do? Yeah. No matter how much money that they put into these campaigns, and we do know that the court has co-signed on this as well, by allowing businesses to have a, a, a larger role in, 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 our, 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 in our election process, but I'm telling you, no matter how many billions of dollars they put in it, those billions of dollars cannot go to the polls and vote. Yeah, let's march! 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 Do not think that you're the underdog. We are not the underdog. We should all march! Yeah! Right on! Yeah.